find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't stopping yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail ball set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pain. Six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 45. Ready to go. Uh, I am, of course, Mike Sorks at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ready to talk about independent wrestling with my good buddy from Texas. My good buddy, Ike Eamon, I consider you a really good friend. Thank you, Sorg. Yet, I've only met you in person once in my life. No, twice. We've done it twice. Twice? You're there been two, there's been a minimum of two occasions, I know. Oh, oh I forgot but there was a second one. Um, yes, and it's been a long time. I mean, it has been a long time. The person I've met twice in my life. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, he, he's Eamon. He's had Eamon to please on the Twitters. And he is also an announcer for, um, a, a ringside announcer for NWA Inspire Pro. Much, and a writer and uh, other things. And other uh, things and stuff and, and other Merch, and stuff. merch table, merch table whore. Uh, um, I've held people's merch before. Yes, yep, yep. I ran sound this weekend. So, oh, he's doing it all. He's working all sides of the business. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thankfully, my side of the business keeps him busy enough, so they haven't been saying, "Hey, you can do this thing." Um, so, uh, I feel fortunate in that. Uh, this week, of course, uh, Eddie Mayhem show. We got a great interview, but we'll get that to to a moment. Um, First, uh, thanks for our intro music from Basic Sickness. Check them out at basicsickness.com for free music and videos. Uh, you can check out everything that we're doing at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, including this and other great shows about all aspects of pro wrestling that we can get out there. Um, please uh, uh, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the YouTube, uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, wherever you want to subscribe to us in audio and video form, whatever you prefer. And uh, you can drop us a line if you have any thoughts about indie wrestling, questions for uh, if you hear about an upcoming guest or anything like that at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or the phone number of uh, the hotline. You can leave a voicemail at 412 206 WMS0. You can also hit us up on Twitter. Uh, of course, our personal ones at, May- at, at Sorgatron, at Amen2, please. That's number two. Um, and also at Mayhem Show. Or you can go check out Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook group, and Google. And uh, please comment, and uh, we're usually here about 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday. Tuesday. Hey, this week we actually have a pre-recorded interview, sorry for you guys that usually tune in live for this show, with a guy (laughs) named Asylum. Now, you may not know Asylum right off the bat, but if you frequent uh, the Indie News, not the Indie News, well, yes, the Indie News. If you uh, frequent the Indie Mayhem show, uh, because he has come up in conversation. He has. He has. A couple weeks ago, um, you may remember him as Paul Heyman's doctor that got uh, destroyed by a kendo stick uh, with uh, by CM Punk. Also, he showed up as uh, Stone Rockwell, I believe, adventurer uh, <laughs> on a recent uh, Performance Center visit video uh, from September that's been circling around the net for the last couple of weeks. We talk about that uh, and so much more. So let's kick over to Clearfield, PA, where I had a chance to talk with Asylum. Okay. Is there like an intro? Uh, yeah, I'll do that in the studio. So I'm just gonna oh. toss to myself. So it's like, and, yeah. Can we just start? I yeah. feel like that's the cutscene noise. Is there one? We don't have one established for this show, but we, we should can. just. Is this on? We started? We're, we're rolling. So is it. Star Wipe? Sure. <laughs> Alright. There better be a Star Wipe when I watch this. <laughs> Let's see if I can get up on this one. Alright, alright. <laughs> This is this is this is the talent is, is having this energy after like how far did you travel in? Uh, five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half we, hours. I'm bitching about two and a half from Pittsburgh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where do you come from? Toronto. Toronto. Just outside That's of Toronto. That's why I thought you were up there. Yeah. Just north of Toronto. That's what it's at, uh, guys. We're here. I guess we kind of already started. We're here with Asylum. He's been around here with the International Wrestling Cartel. We've been checking. We've been here for uh, probably about a year, right? No. No. Not not a year? No. Um, I count the shows. I don't count the time. <laughs> I count how many matches I've had with them, and I, I, I think this is like, yeah, like maybe half a dozen. Half a dozen, okay. 
All right. But uh, this is six, half a dozen. I don't know whichever's higher. This is the Indie Mayhem show, and we are here. In Never Clear. mind. Never We're mind. out in the middle of nowhere in Clearfield, PA, a little closer to the Canadian border, at least. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. So, um, well, first I want you know kick it off. You know, uh, we'll get a little bit into. Uh, uh, some of your recent goings on, but but we like it to start to show off because it's about the passion of pro wrestling. Why are we in this? Why are we at an indie show, five hours, two hours away, whatever, in, in the mountains here in Pennsylvania, in Appalachia? <laughs> Where the hell is Jock Sampson, right? Yeah. Um, Where is he? I, I don't know. Hi. Hi, Jock. <laughs> hey, Jock. I love What's you. What's up? Oh, yeah, we love him. Um, so, uh, t like, what was your first kind of uh, exposure to wrestling where you were like, oh, yeah, this is something I need to check out? Like, what's your first earliest memory? Mm, I have I have very vivid memories because I was older. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, older as in I was about 10 or 11. I didn't know anything about wrestling until then. Before that, I was all about um, comic books, superheroes, stuff like that. Okay. And then, um, just flipping channels, Ultimate Warrior caught my eye and he was like, a real life superhero to me, so I was like, this guy's crazy. This guy isn't a human. So I, I was kind of started going into it, and it was around that time WrestleMania 6 was in Sky Dome in Toronto. Yeah. So I was like, I, mean, I can go see this guy because it was like, it was in all the papers, like it was huge news uh, in Toronto getting WrestleMania. So it just became this, you know, bigger than life thing. I was watching it on TV. It just started to, just so happened that it was coming to Toronto, and I begged for tickets for my parents, and then we went and. I was ruined from then on. Oh jeez. Did you get good seats? Can we spot you on the... No, no. no, no we horrible out there? seats. Yeah, out no. There? My I... parents didn't give a shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, here, you're going. There, that's it. Oh, it was <laughs> Not so, good seats. Probably went to 29 and I was like, you know, I don't care. Let's get, let's stub up the top ring. I don't... I loved it when the Undertaker fire warmed us up and that... Yeah, that always scares the crap out of me, that pyro. <laughs> Especially so there. Especially in my life, it was so huge, you know. Yeah, you can spot me, actually. I had, um, at Toronto again, um, 99, like a WCW event. It was, uh, I think it was Mayhem. I'm front row dead <laughs> center. Like, you cannot miss me. I just watched me. that a couple months ago for the first really? time. Really? Like, yeah. it was Bret Hart and Sting at, at, like, the first match. And then, I don't know, like, per uh, Mr. Perfect was on it and Sid. Mm -hmm. And then the main event was Benoit and, and Bret Hart, I think. He won the title. Bret Hart won the, the title. I think it was from, I think it was him and Benoit. But anyway, I'm it, it the entire card. And it's hilarious. I'm wearing like a uh, Hitman, Hitman jersey and stuff. <laughs> and We're gonna have to go look for that. And yeah, oh, you can. All you have to do is watch about 30 one. seconds of it. And be, you can just point Damn, me out and laugh. There he is. I'm like 19, a big ponytail, the <laughs> fat, chubby cheeks, no beard. It's so amazing. So you were a little, you were kind of a hardcore wrestling fan this whole time through, right? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. So what, well, I mean, only, only, only WWE stuff because yeah. I didn't get anything else. Like we didn't, where I came, like where I grew up, it, we didn't have like AWA or you know anything. We didn't even have Stampede. Like everybody says, oh, you're from Canada. We didn't get that stuff there. Like I had um, like superstars and Cavalcade and All Star Wrestling. Like that was it. That's all, like, I couldn't seek anything else out. But I didn't know anything else, so to me that was all there was. Mm -hmm. And then later on I started talking to people and they're like, hey, there's WCW. And then I started watching that and that was a little harder to find, but it, I was all WWF stuff. Nice. Like my whole, my whole life, for the first probably six years of my obsession. Nice. That's all it was. So at what point did you decide, you, you turned the corner and say, hey, I want to I wanna do this, I want to get in the ring? Um, I think it's because it is like consuming every second of my life. Uh, we would be in high school wrestling in, uh, we would take a drama class, like a theater class, mm -hmm. and that's all we would do is wrestle the whole yeah. time. And the teacher would be like, hey, stop it, that's all you guys do. Why don't you just become a wrestler? And then, um, I don't even remember, I must have done some research because it didn't, uh, it wasn't just known or any, anywhere, but um, I found Ron Hutchison. He trained Edge and Christian and Trish Stratus okay. and stuff like, um, just outside of Toronto. And I found that, and I sent pictures and a resume and the whole deal, and I went to meet them, and then they accepted me. And then um, I started training there three days a week for like, two years, and that's how I that's how I started. I just thought like I didn't even I had zero zero confidence. To me, it was just like wow, if I could have one match, mm -hmm. that would be like the coolest thing ever. Awesome. So that was my goal. How long have you been uh, since your first match? That was like nine years ago. Nine years ago? Okay. Nine years, yeah, yeah. About that, like in my early 20s. Okay, awesome. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. 
Um, so, uh, you know, one of the big things, uh, you know, you've been on my list to get on the show for a while, but definitely after we saw this video pop up a couple weeks ago, mm. uh, you are, I guess we can say featured in the uh, performance. I'm in it. You're in it. <laughs> oh, you, you, got a pretty, you, got a you got a pretty memorable part in there, uh, I thought. Uh, the uh, performance center down in Orlando with the WWE, yep. of course, uh, you know, they, they, they invited a lot of yep. folks down. Everybody, they were, we were all uh, invites, mm -hmm. or whatever, or whatever you want to call it. And, and, and you, you actually have shown up on WWE TV in the past. Yes. So, uh, so I guess you're in the cycle with them, right? Yeah. Whatever yep. that works. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm on their list, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but you were, um, what, you were at CM Punk's doc doctor? I was like Paul Heyman's Paul doctor. Paul Heyman's doctor, that's CM right. Punk kicked my ass. That's right. Well, at least at least it's better than uh, one guy we talked to on the show who we talk to him every time Ryback's like uh, put him through a table down in Texas. So it was I'd almost uh, that Kindle stick hurts, man. I'd almost rather just one table bump <laughs> than like twelve Kendo stick shots. Like if you watch it again, he hits me a lot mm -hmm. and hard. But hey. <laughs> It, was, it felt great. <laughs> That's what you say when they ask you. How, are you okay? Perfect. Better than I was before we did it. Best in the world. Yeah, best exactly. Best in the world. Those, were the, those kendo <laughs> shots were the best in the world. Awesome. Um, so, so how was your experience there at the, uh, the performance center? Um, I kind of knew what to expect going in. Um, it was a, it was pretty much exactly, it was a pretty good depiction uh, yeah. in that video of, of what it was like. Um, they just they beat you up for three days and just see see what you have see if you're gonna nice. quit and uh, I knew I was ready I trained for it so mm -hmm. I mean it was hard mm -hmm. um, but I didn't uh, I didn't stop or slow down or anything generally is it is it because um, I get the sense sometimes that they you know WWE's infamously or famously uh, however you want to look at it brings in like just like athletes kind of off the NFL field or something like that uh, was it generally felt like it was it was guys like you that had been at it for a little bit or were there kind of like some more green just general athletes there as well that try now uh, there was a pretty good mix I think it was about 30 of us mm -hmm. and I'd say at least half had little to no experience mm -hmm. at least half and then um, you know there was a, a bunch of people that had like um, you know a lot of experience and, and pretty well traveled and then there was some in-between guys that were just like like you know a few times you know once a month maybe or something like that once every two or three months like just doing a show here and there but it was just a mix there was uh, guys who, who didn't even really know what wrestling is all the way to guys who've been to Japan and back so wow and guys who were you know like in tough enough and had you know opportunities in the past and whatever so there was literally every every person awesome. type of person I think of course not just physically they test you they had a bit of a character day yep. I was in the video now you had this this character that that I really want to see on the indie someday unless, yeah. they, unless they already own the race to it I'm not sure I know how they can be I know. WWE but um, <laughs> well, you made an appearance I don't know what you signed man uh, but tell us tell us about this this adventure character that you that you uh, Stone Rockwell Stone Rockwell Pause. Adventure. He is um, he's an action adventure superstar. It's exactly like what an he action is. figure. Like he's kind a, of a uh, an action adventure. Okay. So he's he's a little bit um, Indiana Jones. Um, you know, just basically your stereotypical B movie, perhaps. Um, nice. Like he's like somebody who thinks everything he does is an action movie. He's completely delusional, and it's it's so much fun to do. Could you see? I, 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 I comes to mind. I imagine this guy running into uh, Ms. Down. You could. That's double. why. Like when I thought of this character, I was like, you could do so much mm -hmm. with this guy in terms of like vignettes and like promos and like interactions with people. Or ads for Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> yeah, any. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there's. There's just like there's so much you can do with them, and I just like it's just be really fun to do. So, yeah, you could just you could do anything with that guy, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, you can go super cheesy with it, or you can um, you know have like a little wink wink to the crowd, but still have like a little bit of a a little bit of an edge to you. There's lots of stuff you could do. And I noticed like almost immediately after I saw this thing pop up, you came out and said, "This was my character. They did not make me do this." Yeah, yeah, that, because people were very weirded mm -hmm. out by it because they. I don't think anybody. I don't. 
talk to a lot of people like mm -hmm. the way we are right now. So people don't really know how I am. They just see like the character when I'm just like, you know, kind of really angry, making stupid faces, picking people up and things like that. Uh, and that's part of why I did that because they've seen that before, mm -hmm. WWE, and everybody's seen that before. So I kind of wanted to, you know, do a 180 and show something completely like, different. You and I thought the outfit this, and everything. The whole deal, like wow. the, you know, the whip and the hat, and um, you know, I'm still trying to hunt down a jacket. <laughs> Where do you get a whip? Anybody? Uh, don't worry about it. I have that <laughs> That's a bitch to bring through the airport. Oh, I bet. I bet. People think it's like you know, a I, sex I, fetish I, I've thing. driven down the weird parts of Toronto. I, I can understand. Okay, I got it. I got yeah, it. I always get stopped at the airport with it. They're like, um, you have a giant whip in your bag. That never goes over well. Then I have to pull out the hat and explain the whole thing to them. It's not pretty. <laughs> and with acting. Um, <laughs> Awesome. All right, let's close it up here. Uh, they're getting ready uh, to, to do the show here. Well, sure. Oh, yeah, well, they'll serve when, when, uh, when, no, when are the doors open. Uh, who knows? Oh, well, actually, hey, we're here with the International Wrestling Cartel. Like I said, you've had a handful yes. of matches with them. What's it like coming down here uh, with this group down here? I love working. There's a there's a ton of people that I either really really like working with or really want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, RJ and um, Dalton Castle and Colin Delaney, um, John McChesney. Who I'm wrestling tonight. <clears throat> I love working with everybody here. Uh, the fans are great. It's fun. Uh, it's pro setup. You know, there's people like you guys here. Everybody seems to really love wrestling mm -hmm. here, and that's cool to be around. Nobody's. A lot of the times you're around people who are still here doing everything, but all they do is complain while they're doing it. And it's if you're gonna complain, just don't do it. <laughs> you know, go 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 be. Negative somewhere. You really gotta like this to to you thrive out here. You absolutely have to, and I feel like if you if you're putting on the hood, hood, then I just feel like you <laughs> you're being phony because you obviously really love it, mm. or you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Because why else would you be here? <laughs> right. So exactly. everybody here seems at least they're putting on a good front. Like you're <laughs> you're putting on a hell of a front right now. Yes. With the fake laugh and the yeah. smile. Yeah, you're doing yeah, yeah. see? You're it's doing a hell of a job. I've worked on it for a few it's years. I've almost been around, perfect. I've been doing this in for seven. Not so. the best I've ever seen, but <laughs> it's oh it's it's not bad. I'm not in front of as many people as you guys are, so I don't I don't have to. <laughs> oh well. Maybe that's your problem. Yeah, yeah. Um anyways, enough about that. Uh our last <laughs> Nothing about your wrestling <laughs> career. <laughs> And the camera miss. Um, so we like to end it off with uh, kind of got a little bit, but I guess with these guys. But uh, like, what's the worst and what's the worst? What's the worst and what's the best thing about uh, about working indie wrestling in your time so far? Oh. <laughs> Do you ask everybody that? I ask everybody. That's I get, a horrible I, I, question. I get really interesting answers though. What's the worst and the best? Can they be the same thing? Yeah, they have been in the past. Really? Yeah. Sometimes I, it's like sometimes it's like the fans and also the fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, depends on the way. I don't even know if I could because I think every day you're always like this is gonna be like my my bullshit hippie answer. Every day is like a every every day is a new experience. So you never like there's some days where just like you're kind of grumpy and it's a long travel day and stuff. So so. Every little bump is the worst thing in wrestling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then there's other days where like, as long as you have a good crowd and a good opponent, to me that's that's the best day in wrestling. So anytime that happens, I'm happy. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. So, hey, anywhere online people can find you and book yes. you or fan you or I don't know if you have shirts to buy or anything. I always have. Uh, I have one of those uh, pro wrestling tees. Nice. Um, little dealies. Uh, but at Asylum1240. Thanks again, Asylum, for that awesome interview. It was good to uh, kind of touch base with him there at uh, Clearfield uh, for IWC's Combat in Clearfield 7. Uh, I, we did get cut off a little bit. He does have a Facebook as well as well as that Twitter that he did mention. Uh, just look up Asylum Flatliner uh, over on Facebook, and you'll find them there as well. Uh, Eamon, I, did you have any thoughts coming out of that interview? I know there was a lot of really cool things, uh, uh, really interesting things we talked about with the WWE Performance Center and, of course, his time with Raw and, and just any wrestling in general. Yeah, it, it, I that the stuff about the performance center actually was kind of cool to me. Just sort of knowing that from what I've heard, from, obviously from him, but I've also you know, to talk to some other people that have you know done uh, training there and, and some tryouts there in the past. And it's very similar to how they portray in the video. I mean, that's I think a really very cool aspect. I mean, it's cool to see 
you know, how this sort of, I guess, ladder is the best way to put it, you know, sort of runs, you know, when it comes to making it for the big time. Yeah, really awesome. Go check. So go check out Asylum. And he's uh, definitely running with IWC, and he's got a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, in, in uh, over the border, and I think around the the, the border states uh, here in the uh, Northeast, uh, around the Buffalo, Toronto area. I think I've seen him uh, pop up a couple of times. So um, I think he also does. Uh, he has a hence the Asylum Flatliner stuff. I think he's part of a tag team up there. He's, he mentioned uh, called the Flatliners too. So go check him out. I, I want that character to get out though. <laughs> I, got, I love that he he is traveling with the whip. So <laughs> as we discussed, um, anyway, so combat in Clearfield seven uh, with IWC, uh, a little bit of experience one it's, and like I said, it was like, I'm just like, Oh, it's two and a half hours. Oh, <laughs> um, and, 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 and didn't I hear somebody like him that says, Hey, we came five hours. So it's like, and I don't have to take a bump, you know? Yeah. Um, it makes me appreciate that and kind of say, you know, Hey, stop stop complaining right uh you know as rough as my weekend was there's definitely a lot of people came from a lot further away for all those shows right um right. the show we're going to talk about in a few minutes uh, hurricane helms he came from chicago uh, yeah, I mean, i'm sure he flew in but but still <laughs> even uh, so I mean, i'm pretty sure he gets i'm pretty sure he gets flight i don't know so maybe somebody can confirm that for me uh <laughs> but this is one of the uh you know we determined them as as house shows for the international wrestling cartel uh one camera set up because of stuff um and, and 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 this show will be up, of course, uh, tomorrow on digital download at pittsburghwrestling.com. Uh, so you can go check that out yourself. Um, but a, a fun show. Asylum had a great match, of course, with John McChesney, another friend of the show from from a while back, from uh, up in Erie, actually. Uh, really good to see uh, uh, that. Uh, Andrew Powell's friend of the show had another great match with Joseph Brooks. Um, Colin Delaney had some uh, had a, uh, interesting tag match, uh, teaming up with RJ City and their friend of the show against Dalton Castle and Keith Hot. Uh, so, uh, wow, I'm, I'm naming a lot of friends of the show, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're tackling most of the IWC roster at this point, um, so uh, another another good good night of matches. A uh, nice crowd. It, it's a really cool event that they do up there because it's usually for the big brothers and big sisters. Um, and uh, it, and this is a town that you know they get they get IWC twice a year, and uh, they are very appreciative of it. This isn't a bunch of smart mark fans. This is like I, I want to say almost like what we see in RWA. Just very appreciative, very into wrestling fans right so much so they had to start bringing guardrails <laughs> as the incident with i think it was j-rock that got hit with a chair by a fan gingerly and that kind of ended it for everybody um so uh but no very fun show um i don't know i don't have much else to say from that it was it was just a cool trip up there so um but of course sunday was the bigger show uh one of the big ones probably the biggest Probably the biggest of the year, probably one of the biggest in their history for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance down at Cal U, California University in PA, um, at the Convocation Center down there. It's uh, a tribute to the troops, too. They had one earlier this year, but this was interesting because they had uh, a few names pop up. Hurricane Helms was part of it, as well as Sanjay Dutt having, I think, in both cases, very, very good, very fun matches. And, of course, you know, highlighting the rest of the RWA, RWA roster. Uh, with us right now on the line, as he usually does after RWA shows, to give his impressions. The guy on the sound is uh, Aaron Hot Wheels. He's at Hot Wheels RWA on, that's with a Z, Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitter. How you doing, sir? Uh, thank you, Sorg, for saying the Z part, because I swear everybody that calls me Hot Wheels uses an S. I know they're used to the whole toys, but I'm not a toy. I'm a big boy. Toy. Copyright infringement. That's that's yeah. why we use the Z. That too. Right? So, <laughs> um, you, of course, uh, you were on a lot of the other side. Well, but one, you, you, it sounds like you had a fun time on the after show, too, with Hurricane Helms. Yes, I did. Uh, before I get to the after Oh, show, and, well, and by the way. Happy birthday, because that was Sunday as well. Yes, it I'm was. I'm glad that they not only supported the troops and supported the wheels with putting on a show for him. Yeah, they did. And I, I said it on my Facebook that that was one of my best birthdays I've had in a long time. I got to spend it with what I like to call my family, my other family, meaning the Sorgatron Media crew and the RWA family and also Cal U. So... It was a very big birthday party that had a lot of great action. Um, and it continued after the show that I'll mention a little bit. But, yeah, the show was very good. The guys 
and gals put on a great show. I mean, Zorg, you put it out earlier. <laughs> the poor uh, uh, ring announcer for the night, I should say, uh, Brian Crawford uh, is a Cal U radio DJ. And, and first of all, because I think we're going to say some really nasty things about him. Um, he He's not <laughs> experienced. I don't right. blame him. But in the moment... It was pissing me off um, dealing with it, uh, yeah. but but he is a radio DJ, and uh, when when I first heard again that you guys had him as your announcer, uh, because the usual one, uh, you know, he he's got prior commitments on Sundays apparently. Um, when you had the show, not your normal slot, um, and I was like, great, cow you kid, that's perfect, right? Oh, he's a DJ, yeah, yeah. he can talk, right? Apparently yeah, you not. And I in- had that discussion even before the show. It's like, all right, we need a. D- we need a ring announcer. You're like, well, why not help like local DJs or somebody that would help you out? And Derek, aka Doctor Feelbed, hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's use the guy that has done the interviews for us lately on the local radio station down here. Well, you figure, hey, somebody that does DJing <laughs> as a job, you think, hey, might do a decent job at ring announcer. And again. Yes, it was his first time, so I forgive the kid for. And he even meant, messaged me yesterday on my Facebook and said, "You know what? I think I'm going to stick to radio DJ." <laughs> but he got like, the experience. Hey, hey, he he knows he has the experience now. Um, yeah. But generally, it, it, it shows how important it is that all the pieces come together, right? Because if you have oh, a bad it announcer, does. it 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 kills the flow of the show. And this oh, killed the it, flow of the show. It, it's funny that you mention it this way. It's like. Because I've had discussion with Derek yesterday, because I was invited down to Cal U for a free dinner for Veterans Day, and I was like, I'm not really in the mood to hang out down there <laughs> right now. He's like, is it because of the dealings of the show? I was like, yes, not because of the talent, just because of the situations mm-hmm. involving <laughs> certain it, things. It, and it, like, it is kind of, enough. and it is kind of an awkward place to have an indie show. I know a lot of people say, yeah. hey, all those empty seats, you're never filling 6,000. No, you're not going to. And I, nobody ever said they would, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a nice building to do it in. It's a different atmosphere. It can feel a little bit bigger. Um, so, and and in the end, uh, you guys cover it. With, I don't know the, the financial dealings, but but money goes to a good cause, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, we had we had a little bit less than the first one, which is kind of strange for having names, but it shows that, hey, names don't always bring somebody in. Mm. It's advertising, and honestly, we did some advertising, and I hate to say it out loud, and I don't care what anybody thinks, but if the college would have did a little bit more, I think we would have did a little bit better. Mm, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but that's just me. But other than that, the talent brought it. I don't know, Sword, you watched it with me. You're in front of me, actually, for once, instead of beside me because the way to – situations and i got to watch it from your angle on the cameras and cal use camera angles and just the live angles and i'm like this is great i'm having so much fun watching this and listening to the live commentary <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was a lot of fun um and uh like i said the matches were great uh, uh great women's match great uh sanjay dunn and shane andrews uh probably was match of the night followed by um you know i don't know a toss up between the three way between the ryans and uh, chris taylor that spilled out to the to the audience actually um i was i really wanted him to do seth rollins off of the top of that entrance just like I know, you've seen on right? pay-per-views lately, right? So did I. I'm, like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, he's going to do a Seth Rollins. And then he just, he kind of came off like a lower railing and stuff. I'm like, ah, what a cop out. Um, but I'm sure there's reasons. Yeah. Hey, I'm not <laughs> jumping, I'm not jumping off stuff that's 10 feet high. So I, who am I to talk? Uh, but, <laughs> but honestly, Sorg, I agree with you. Those were, there are three choices and two of them you said was the three way with the, Ryan and Ryan and Chris, Sanjay Dutt and Shane Andrews. And my third was, the tag team match with Generation Dead, our favorite tag team, Sorg, and uh, Ohio's for Killers, aka used to be known as the Irish Airborne. Yeah, I didn't and know. I, I didn't know which uh, Ohio's for Killers we were getting because we had a different combination last time. Right, and we actually got the originals. Nice, <laughs> so, nice. That was cool. So, and, that was cool I to, to realize, like, favorites. to realize, like, we're getting an Irish Airborne match against Generation Dead was really good. Really awesome. Yeah, 
they they seem to work so well together, and I'd love to see a rematch again with those two, and maybe add an arrow form in there, make it a triple threat. Oh, for Who sure. that would be great just to see that. Oh, I'd love to see arrow form back again. Of course, uh, this surprised me: Sanjay Dett winning the cruiserweight belt, which means he'll be back here in December. Yes, yes. Uh, he, he even after the show, he came up to me. He's like, "I love RWA." He's like, "I love this crowd." I'm happy to be part of this company. I was That's like, cool. thank you. So he hasn't seen the other building yet though. <laughs> well, he's probably seen smaller. <laughs> That's true. That is true. He's been, he's been up and down the road a few times. And, uh, I heard nothing about good things about him. Um, to the point <laughs> he, 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 uh, Chachi, poor Chachi had just laid down some wire. Right. And it was yeah. still curled up and we haven't he, like, he just laid it down and I was getting to the next step would, you know, to, to lay it out and, and, and run it and, and tape it. And then Sanjay comes back around. Uh, like I, I hadn't seen him yet, but he like arrives, whatever walks around our table and trips over it and apologizes to us. I'm like, no dude, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, see, and apparently, and apparently Missy had, had a good time. Uh, uh, hanging with him over by the merch booth as well so i heard nothing but good things it's great to see that he's a positive influence you never know with some of these guys right some of these guys yeah. get a big big head about things i I've, I've had a lot of discussion over the weekend about uh people from a certain fed uh fed company uh that that happens to be on tv that whenever they show up they're you know they're you know, big time in the locker room for the most part. Yeah. And it's nice to see somebody like Sanjay Dutt who has been around and has done so much um, is, is a really good influence out there as well. And it sounds like Hurricane Helms was as well. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, my experience with him was great. After the show, I asked before he left, could he come out, take a picture with me for my birthday and stuff. And not only did he come out, but he came out with his personalized belt that he had threw it over my shoulder and said, let's take this picture, bud. And we took like three pictures because everybody wanted to take a picture with me with the belt and him. So, and after the show was an after party and him and I hung out and he ate a cheeseburger. I ate a cheeseburger and we sat and talked about indie wrestling and uh, Omega, the company he works Mm. and I think partially owns. Um, And he told me some stories of, people that you should trust and how to help company out and everything. And it was a great experience with him. I, I really enjoyed having him. I mean, not to talk about prices, but I wish his price was lower so I could see him more often. <laughs> uh, but, but he's, he's, really he's, but he's one experience. of those guys I think deserves it because he is yeah, a name. He, he did have, and he's a great, he's a great, you know, a larger than life character, uh, you know, with what he's doing for the kids, even if they're not familiar with his history. Right. So, Oh yeah. He, that, he, he, he got along with everybody. Everybody I talked to after the show went out to his table and there's lines. So I was happy. There's people dressed up as him in the crowd and they took video of it for the school. And that was really cool. And, I think that was another thing you and I experienced, Sorg, was I called it the Cal U Kiss Camp or Dance Camp because they caught a lot of us dancing. And I don't know, there's this one guy that kind of looked like me up there dancing that they kind of caught. <laughs> As opposed to the one that's on Instagram? Yeah, kind of like that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was a great time by all. And, and we are Dr. Phil Bad did announce that we will be back in November of next year for nice. another Veterans Day event. So, And I like that it settled on the uh, Veterans Day weekend. That seems more appropriate than, yes. than where you guys had it before. Uh, so, so that's cool. That's cool. I can't wait. Can't wait. It, yeah. it, it, you kind of have your WrestleMania of the year now. Yeah, I mean, we kind of had two WrestleManias in one year, and I'm happy to have one now, okay? it's <laughs> Let's just have one because that's enough for me. Awesome. <laughs> I had a busy weekend because of working West Virginia the night before. So, Sword, you had Clearfield. <laughs> I had West Virginia. Yeah. Then we both had Cal U the next day. <laughs> yep. So I think you and I both were tired. A little bit, a little bit. I, I'm so glad I only do two groups. You know, I, uh... Oh, I, I do have some special information I found out from West Virginia. Okay. That WCW Stro, if you remember him, the Maestro, is on a Sleepy Hollow the next two weeks. What? And yes. 
he is playing a biker on Sleepy Hollow. I was like, wow, thanks for the info and stuff. So keep your eye out for him. He's You're a talking biker about this or... guy? Yes, I am talking about that guy, the maestro. <laughs> wow. In the wrestling. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Wow. Eamon, you had something. Uh, you know, Salute the Troops also going to be available this week on PittsburghWrestling.com. So to go, uh, if it's Wednesday or or, or further away, uh, or Wednesday or after, uh, it should be up by now, at least a digital download. And you can at least pre-order the DVDs, which uh, should ship here within the next week and a half. So as I get art in from our various partners uh, that I've been working with uh, these feds. Uh, so, by the way, Iron Skull Productions, I believe it is. It's, it's over on rwalive.com. You can link to it. Fantastic artwork. Really, really excited about the stuff. They really upped the game as far as your posters and everything I've seen on Facebook. Yeah, I, really, I, really, I really appreciate you. them. Yeah, he also updated and cleaned up our logo, and I think that'll help you out, Sorg. <laughs> certainly, certainly. I have, to, I have to redo some graphics now. Uh, so thanks for that extra work. Uh, <laughs> I have so much I need to do, uh, but no, great stuff. Um, you can you can definitely see. Um, well, <laughs> I don't mean this as as a, as a smash on you guys, but you can kind of you can you definitely see what's what's done by them and 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 uh, you know whatever's going on previously. Uh, so yeah, yeah. go check them out. Uh, Amen. You had fun, fun, fun fest. We did. Did I get uh, all the funds? I got all the funds. Uh, three no, days of fun. Okay. Uh, we participated in Fun 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 Fest weekend. We being uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, this past weekend, it was our first year ever being a part of that festival, and it was uh, a pretty amazing time. Uh, uh, I, you know, we talked sort of the idea of how festival shows sort of go. I mean, we talked when you went to uh, Gathering the Juggalos not too long ago. But it's just sort of the idea that it's a very different than your normal independent wrestling show. Uh, uh, sort of mainly because of the fact that you are wrestling in front of a different audience and, and you're putting on something in front of an audience that I would say a majority of the people aren't, you know, wrestling fans that follow independent wrestling or even wrestling. Yeah, music. yeah. You know, I, and, and I've also had that experience. Uh, the first show that I shot ringside was actually mm-hmm. a back-to-back show. I think I think Wills was there as well uh, at the Steel City Con. I think it might have been called. Yeah, I think it's still City Con by then. Uh, mm-hmm. But they had basically free wrestling at the con. Yeah, that you paid to get in, of course. But but they had a two day title tournament. Oh really? And it, it's one of those like like so many there weren't really there for the wrestling. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've seen old videos from uh, Prime Wrestling PWO uh, at these Wrestle Ramas. Uh, with some of the work I've been doing with Joe Dabrowski. And, and again, it's that casual, it, it, it's, what are they? They call them WrestleRamas, but they're at some kind of like car show or something. Yeah. Um. And, and, and again, you just, it doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. You don't have actual fans there um, that are kind of even following stuff or care enough about wrestling to get into it or look like it. Um, it gets weird. It gets weird. The, 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 but your experience, like, how did that kind of go for you? I thought it went really well, uh, honestly. Uh, and and we definitely, I mean, this being our first year ever at the festival, uh, we it was definitely a, a te- we had to test some stuff and, and really, you know, sort of test the waters a bit. Uh, we kind of went for the most part. Uh, obviously, it wasn't like a regular Inspired Pro Wrestling event, but uh, we did try to keep to what we were all about, which was a lot of, you know, we did have a lot of character work stuff and we did do, you know, some, some implements of stuff that we've been telling a story for. For example, we had a, a loser ladies inspire pro match between the, uh, the former tag team of the Hollywood knives, which was a big blow off thing. And luckily the crowd was super receptive to it. Like it wasn't a case of, you know, people didn't know what was going on or couldn't follow. Like I think people really understood it and, and, and sort of got what we were going for. Uh, I thought it was really good. Uh, it was definitely, like I said, you know, you never know what you're going to get with a new audience, uh, especially one like a like a festival audience. But everyone seemed to really love it. Uh, we had, uh, you know, I, I really loved. Uh, not to say that day one was bad, uh, but it was definitely like a like a tester for us, I would say. Uh, but our day two and day three events, I think, really did some really good stuff. Uh, uh, we got some really great crowds uh, uh, coming out. Uh, and like you said, it, it's interesting because it's not a crowd that goes to an event, pays the tickets, and, and goes. They're just walking around outdoors at the festival, you know, going between different 
stages and, and food courts and stuff like that. And they just happen to see some wrestling. So you hope you can, you know, hook them uh, and, and get them to watch. And, and luckily they did. Uh, there are some really great matches. A lot of people busted some really great stuff out. Um, a lot of people that have never wrestled in front of that audience before too, which was really cool. Um, uh, it was really fun. And, and it seems uh, that the, uh, the guys at uh, Transmission, which run uh, Fun 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 Fest, founded Fun 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 Fest, uh, really liked us and, and really enjoyed our sets. And, and, and uh, it looks like we, uh, not to confirm everything, anything, obviously, but uh, it looks like we made a good enough impression to hopefully make it back next year, which would be super, super cool. Because it was, a, it was honestly an amazing experience just all around. It, it really, Fun 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 Fest is a great example of, you know, what Austin, Texas is all about. Just crazy, um, you know, just over the top sort of stuff, you know. And, and, you know, we got to actually enjoy the festival too, and it was amazing. I got to see Judas Priest. Uh, I caught uh, King Diamond. I was pretty close to uh, King Diamond, actually. Um, I, I got the end of uh, Genuine set, which was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, and there, and there was such a mix of different, you know, um, musical artists, and, and there was also some comedian stuff as well. Uh, we were also did it right next to uh, our wrestling ring was set up next to the Volcom uh, skate ramp sort of setup, which was crazy. Uh, it, it's just an interesting environment that, that it was very unique, and, and and created some really good stuff. Uh, you, you can actually uh, search online. We've been trying to share some people that Instagram photos and videos from the event. There's some really cool stuff. Uh, friend of the show, Killer McKenzie, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, busting out a moonsault, which is kind of crazy. Um, and, the, and the crowd ate that up. Uh, there's some really cool stuff out there. Uh, if you Instagram, you know, Inspire for Wrestling or, or, or Instagram, uh, just hashtag FFFFest. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there about uh, the whole weekend. Um, it was super cool, and, and I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, it was definitely an experience that we will not ever forget. So uh, some really great stuff there. A couple announcements from that is that um, if you weren't able to attend our Fun 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 Fest, we did see a couple actually. It was cool to see a couple regular fans that I've seen before at Inspire Pro events at the actual sets, which was kind of cool. Um, but for those that couldn't, you know, plus out the money for the entire weekend, um, we are releasing all the matches online for free nice. uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, we'll hopefully be rolling those out very soon. Uh, and, and there were some honestly really good matches on that, on that card. Uh, some matches that I was super impressed with. Um, so we will be rolling out that out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash inspire pro video. So keep out, keep an eye out on that and on social media for the uh, uh, um, upcoming sort of stuff that's happening. Uh, the big stuff that we have next coming up will be our January 4th event. We are taking uh, December off, uh, you know, with the holiday season, you know, we know it's you know going to be kind of hectic and stuff like that. So we are uh, but doing a little less than two months away from our next show, which is January 4th, our XC of Gold 2 event. Uh, it's one of our bigger events of the year. We found our first ever champion at last year's event, and this one is going to be even bigger. Uh, we just announced the first match. Uh, for that event, uh, and it's a big one, and it's a really a big dream match uh, with a friend of the show, Absolute Ricky Starks, uh, taking on the uh, returning uh, Chuck Taylor, uh, and that's going to be amazing because you know those two guys are just over the top character, you know, just, and and on top of that, amazing professional wrestlers. So that is going to be a match if you're in Texas wrestling. If you know who Ricky Starks is, you want to see that match because that is going to be killer. Um, we also have uh, some other uh, interesting guests that will be also on that event that we will hopefully be announcing very soon. That will just add to to the excitement for that uh, upcoming stuff. So that's January 4th. Uh, but like I said, don't worry about uh, the too long of a wait because we will be rolling out some free content uh, in that time. So definitely, uh, if you haven't checked out Inspire Pro Wrestling, InspireProWrestling.com, uh, Facebook Inspire Pro. Uh, Twitter at Inspire Pro Res. Uh, go check us out and, and, and go see what we're all about. Uh, the DVDs have been rolling out pretty well. Uh, our August event should be up very soon. Uh, I, uh, there's just some last minute touches that uh, our good friend Lex Library and Agreements is putting on there. Uh, and then uh, it won't be long after that with that uh, Battle Wars. Uh, our big Chicago event will be out uh, soon. So uh, there's cool stuff coming down the pipe uh, pretty con consistently for us. So definitely go. Uh, check us out and support us. That's uh, again, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so with that, any uh, I, I know 
Coming up here in Pittsburgh, they have uh, and uh, no, they're not NWA anymore. Pro Wrestling <laughs> Express mm. over in McKeesport, PA. Um, uh, having a show with a lot of a lot of friends of the show actually on it. Uh, uh, called Do or Die. Go check it out. ProWrestlingExpress.com. They have plenty of video on there if you want to go check out what they're doing. It, 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 always cool because they they have like their own setup basically. Um, mm. Friends of the show like G Raver and Gory are on there. Uh, so uh, go check it out. Uh, it, it should be a good collection of talent for the most part uh, if you're in the area. And uh, check out their videos, sit, uh, sample it, see if you dig it. Mm. Um, that's all I have really in the area. Do you have any other shows on your radar? There's actually now a lot of uh, big independent wrestling shows uh, as, as far as like, the gigantic uh, stuff happening. Uh, I, I know that uh, I guess uh, if you're a fan of Evolve Wrestling, uh, they're holding events in China this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're holding like a big weekend of, of stuff in China with uh, uh, some of the guys over there. So, uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, Dragon Gate Evolve and also uh, Shine Wrestling Foods and stuff over there that weekend. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Um, so, if you like, you know, that if you're in China, if you're listening to this show and you're in China, hello. And also go check those shows out because that's, uh, that's going to be some good stuff. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. And also, big announcement, because I, I know I'm not going to make the mistake of talking about this without you uh, getting your two cents in again. Mm. Uh, Global Pro Wrestling. No. Global, Global Force. Global, Global Force Wrestling. Uh, of course, uh, uh, they're going to have that New Japan pay-per-view here coming up. Mm. Uh, uh, recently announced that Jim Ross is going to be announcing it. And that intrigues me. It yes. intrigues me greatly. That's one of the, we mentioned uh, I I was going to keep my uh, eyes on that. Uh, if anything further developed in it, further developed, sure did. Um, yeah, I, I'm interested to see uh, how how Jim Ross calls New Japan Pro Wrestling action. That's kind of kind. I mean, that alone, I think, is incentive enough for me to check it out. Like, I, I really think so. Yes, and uh, Alice Carr says Cybernetico at Shakara's season finale. Oh. Yep, uh, it's the Cybernetico, the big uh, eight-on-eight uh, uh, tornado tor- uh, elimination tag match uh, uh, is coming up soon. Uh, Chikara's doing, uh, and they're doing an eye pay-per-view, I believe, on December 5th. I may have the date wrong. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe it's Tomorrow Never Dies is the name of it, and you can get that through smvod.com. Uh, uh, pre-order the, uh, the uh, eye pay-per-view. So. Awesome. Go check it out. I think that's all the wrestling for this week, sir. Yes, that's all, that's all the wrestling I can handle. <laughs> that's all the wrestling we can handle. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of it. At Hot Wheels RWA, check him out. And check out RWALive.com. He has a good hand in what goes on over there. Uh, and, of course, Aim is at Amen 2 please. I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, InspirePro. InspirePro.com? Right? Uh, InspireProWrestling.com. InspireProWrestling.com. And, of course, everything we're doing over here is at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or our DVDs and uh, digitals over at uh, PittsburghWrestling.com, actually. Uh, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker and iHeartRadio for the Indie Mayhem Show or subscribe to our Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube page. Uh, drop us a line at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Our hotline is 412-206-WMS0. You can join us here live every Tuesday night. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for Amen's friends over there. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, over at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, thanks again to Basic Sickness for the intro outro song, basicsickness.com. You can support the show, support the Wrestling Mayhem Show series of shows with patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show or pro wrestling tease.com slash WMS. Um, and, uh, with that, Hey, tell your friends, tell your friends, if you like indie wrestling and you have friends like indie wrestling and you like how we talk about indie wrestling, I guess, uh, (laughs) I hope so. Share it. Share it. If you got this far, I guess you do. So we'll see you guys next time. Go support some. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 